Hello everybody, this is the first of two videos on translation. In this video we will introduce all the important components of translation that you need to know for the USMLE Step 1. In the next video we will go over the individual steps of translation. Translation is a more straightforward process than transcription, however there are still some important concepts that you need to be familiar with in regards to translation. So let's get started. Translation is the process by which ribosomes synthesize proteins from a mature mRNA molecule. The mRNA molecule contains the information that specifies the amino acid sequence. Translation is a very complicated process which requires the actions of specialized enzymes made from RNA called ribosomes. Translation also requires the action of another type of RNA called tRNAs. There are also various proteins involved in translation called initiation factors, elongation factors, and termination factors. Lastly, this process also requires energy from ATP and also amino acids. This sounds very complex and daunting. However, you only need to know the general function of all of these molecules. You do not need to be familiar with the specific details of these molecules. So just like transcription, translation can be broken down into three steps. Initiation, elongation, and termination. We will talk more about these steps of translation on the next video. For now, let's just know that there are three major steps in translation that are named just like in transcription. In this video, we're going to introduce and describe the most important elements of translation. These include the structure and function of tRNAs, the function of the enzyme aminoacyl tRNA synthetase, the structure and function of ribosomes, codons and anticodons, we will also talk about the start and stop codons, and lastly, we will talk about the proteins involved in translation, which are called translation factors. So let's start with transfer RNAs or tRNAs. tRNAs are RNA molecules which carry amino acids to ribosomes during translation for the purpose of incorporating them into proteins. If you remember from our lecture on transcription, tRNAs are made by RNA polymerase type 3 in eukaryotic cells. tRNAs are single-stranded RNA molecules approximately 75 to 95 nucleotides long. What makes tRNAs unique is that they have a high concentration of modified nitrogenous bases. This is unique because most of the nucleic acids in the body only contain four types of nitrogenous bases, which are essentially all the same. However, tRNAs have nitrogenous bases which are unique and only found in tRNAs. The structure of tRNAs is extremely important for understanding their function. tRNAs have a clover-like structure with four arms. Each of these arms has an important function. Let's take a closer look at these functions in the next slide. These arms are the anticodon arm, the 3' prime arm, the T arm, and the D arm. Let's start with the anticodon arm. The anticodon arm contains a 3 nucleotide sequence which binds a complementary sequence on the mRNA molecule called a codon. We will talk more about codons in the next few slides. Next, let's talk about the 3' prime end. It is called the 3' prime end because it is formed by the 3' prime end of the tRNA molecule. Remember, tRNA is a type of RNA, therefore it has a 5' prime and a 3' prime end. This arm is important because it binds the target amino acid via a 3 nucleotide sequence called CCA. What is interesting is that every type of tRNA binds its respective amino acid via the same 3 nucleotide sequence CCA. The reason for this is because the 3' prime end does not determine the specificity of the amino acid that the tRNA binds. Instead, this is performed by a special enzyme called aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. We will talk more about this interesting enzyme shortly. The next arm is called the T arm. This arm is involved in binding the tRNA to the ribosome during translation. Lastly, we are left with the D arm. The D arm is used by the enzyme aminoacyl tRNA synthetase to identify the tRNA type and add the correct amino acid in a process called tRNA charging. We're going to take a closer look at tRNA charging in just a bit. For now, let's take a look at the structure of tRNA. Here we have a visual representation of a charged tRNA, which simply means that it is a tRNA that has an amino acid attached to it. As you can appreciate from this image, 
the amino acid binds to the CC8 sequence on the 3' arm. Every tRNA molecule, regardless of what type, binds its amino acid via a CCA sequence. We can also see that opposite to the 3' prime arm is the anticodon arm, which contains a 3' nucleotide sequence that binds to another 3' nucleotide sequence on mRNA called a codon. We will talk more about this shortly. Lastly, we can also see the T arm, which is important for tRNA binding to ribosomes, and the D arm, which is important for connecting the correct amino acids to the appropriate tRNA. So now, let's talk about amino acyl tRNA synthetase. This is an important enzyme because it makes sure that the correct amino acid is bound to tRNA. It does this by carefully identifying a tRNA molecule before adding an amino acid to it, or charging it. There are 20 types of amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzymes, one for every type of amino acid. Here we can see an illustration of the tRNA charging mechanism. So let's go over this together. First, you have an empty tRNA molecule which is identified by its respective amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzyme. This enzyme then loads the corresponding amino acid to the tRNA molecule using ATP in the process. So we can imagine that this is an empty tRNA, it has no amino acid, Amino acyl tRNA will identify this tRNA and then it will identify its correct amino acid and via a reaction which requires ATP, it will produce a charged tRNA. Now remember, every single type of amino acid has its respective amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So we can imagine that over here we have a different amino acid which has its own tRNA and its own amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzyme. The reaction is pretty much the same otherwise. Something that I want you to keep in mind is that the process of making proteins requires energy in the form of ATP and GTP. We will talk more about this on the next video, but for now, just keep it in the back of your head. Next, let's talk about ribosomes. Ribosomes are large RNA molecules which are composed of two subunits. If you recall from our previous lectures, ribosomes are made by RNA polymerase type 1 in eukaryotic cells. Ribosomes, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic, are composed of two subunits, a large subunit and a small subunit. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis and contain three sites which tRNAs can bind during the process of translation. Let's take a closer look at the structure of ribosomes on the next slide. Here we can appreciate the basic structure of ribosomes. One thing I want you to understand is that prokaryotes and eukaryotes both have ribosomes. However, they have different kinds of ribosomes with different subunits. Eukaryotes have ribosomes which contain a 60S large subunit and a 40S small subunit. While prokaryotes have ribosomes which contain a 50S large subunit and a 30S small subunit. The reason for this is because bacteria have smaller ribosomes. However, the basic mechanism of prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes is almost the same. This is important to know because inhibition of prokaryotic ribosomes is the principle behind many kinds of modern antibiotics. So in a test, if you see 50S and 30S ribosomal subunits, just know that they are talking about prokaryotic ribosomes. With that said, both kinds of ribosomes have three docking points where tRNA combined. They are labeled the E site, the P site, and the A site. The A site stands for the acceptor site because it is the site where charged tRNAs bind to bring in the next amino acid. The P site stands for the peptidyl site and it is the site where the new amino acid is bound to the growing protein chain. 
It is called the peptidyl site because this is the site where peptide bonds are created. Lastly, the E site stands for the exit site, and it is where the empty tRNA leaves the ribosome after its amino acid has been incorporated into the new protein chain. Don't worry, we will take a closer look at this on the next video. For now, just keep these things in mind. Now, let's take a look at codons. Codons are three nucleotide sequences on mRNA which code for amino acids. They do this by binding the tRNA with the correct amino acid required. Codons are by convention written in the 5 to 3' prime direction because mRNA is read in the 5 to 3' prime direction by ribosomes. Specifically, codons bind to anticodons on the tRNA molecules which are also three nucleotide sequences. Lastly, a single anticodon can bind to multiple codons and code for the same amino acid. This is because of the codon degeneracy principle and wobble effect. Understanding this mechanism can be somewhat challenging, but what you need to know is that each amino acid has various codons which code for the same amino acid. That is, there are 64 codons, with the exception of the stop codons, which code for 20 amino acids. The other thing you need to know is that in the three nucleotide sequence of a codon, only the first two nucleotides code for the tRNA. The last nucleotide is usually not important for picking the correct tRNA and therefore amino acid. This is why silent mutations exist, because the change in nucleotide occurs in the third nucleotide of the codon, and this codon is irrelevant when it comes to picking the correct amino acid. So for example, here we have a representation of a codon, three nucleotides. These two nucleotides usually will determine the amino acid. This nucleotide is irrelevant. So for example, you could have a mutation that changes this U into an A, and this will still code for the same amino acid. That is the codon degeneracy principle. So in essence, it is the interaction between the first two nucleotides that will determine which tRNA is going to bind to this codon. The nucleotide in the third position is irrelevant. It does not really determine which tRNA is going to bind this codon. So if you had a mutation that changed this U into, let's say, an A, this would be a silent mutation because you would still get the same amino acid. However, occasionally you can get a mutation which converts a regular codon which codes for an amino acid into one of the three stop codons. That is an example of a nonsense mutation. So for example, let's assume that we have a codon A, A, A. Normally this codon codes for the amino acid lysine. Now let's say for a second that we have a mutation that converts the A in the first position to a U. All of a sudden we have the codon UAA. And this is a unique codon because it does not code for an amino acid. Instead it codes for the stopping of translation. So if this happens, all of a sudden your, your mRNA will only get read up until this position the rest of the mRNA will not get read because the ribosome will assume that that's the end of the protein. This will lead to truncated proteins that are usually non-functional. These are bad mutations. Another thing that I want you to know is the direction in which mRNA is read by ribosomes during translation. So mRNA molecules normally are read from the 5' prime end to the 3' prime end end. And this makes perfect sense because as we said in previous lectures, the 5' prime end is the first part of the mRNA molecule that interacts with the ribosome. Another thing that I want you to know is the convention in which codons are written. So every time you see a codon, the first position is closest to the 5' prime end and the last position is closest to the 3' prime end. So for example, in this codon CCU, the C is the 5 prime end and the U is the 3 prime end. And this makes a lot of sense since mRNA is read from the 5 to 3 prime direction. 
So now let's talk about the special codons, that is, the start and stop codons. Synthesis of every protein starts when a ribosome detects a special codon known as a start codon. Basically, when an mRNA molecule enters a ribosome, the ribosome will not start making protein until it encounters a start codon. There's only one start codon. It is AUG, which codes for the amino acid methionine. This means that every protein has at least one methionine amino acid at some point. This amino acid may be cleaved as part of post-translational modifications, but what you need to know is that methionine is present in every newly synthesized protein, before post-translational modifications, at least. Just like how special codons signal the start of protein synthesis, special codons also signal the end of protein synthesis. A ribosome will keep reading an mRNA molecule and add amino acids until it encounters one of three stop codons. The stop codons are unique because they are the only codons which do not code for an actual amino acid. Instead, they recruit special proteins called termination factors which signal the ribosome to stop protein synthesis and release the protein. There are three stop codons, UGA, UAA, and UAG. You must be familiar with these codons as well as the start codon, AUG. Now I want to briefly go over the proteins required for translation. There are various translation proteins with complex functions. Luckily, you do not need to be familiar with any specific type. What you need to know is that they are grouped into three groups based on what function they play during translation. Initiation factors assist in the initiation process of translation. Elongation factors assist in the elongation process of translation and termination factors assist with termination of translation. We will look at the specific ways that these proteins assist in translation in the next video. However, it will be a very superficial explanation as you are not expected to be familiar with the exact mechanisms associated with these proteins. So in summary, translation is the process by which mature mRNA, ribosomes, tRNAs, translation proteins, and ATP are utilized to make proteins. tRNAs are extremely important for translation and their function is determined by their arms. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. Codons are the code by which amino acids are picked to make proteins. Translation requires the help of special proteins called initiation factors, elongation factors, and termination factors. In the next video, we will analyze the individual steps involved in translation. Thank you for watching and see you on the next lecture.